So how's that good old graphic novel medium doing? Let's find out. Yes, hi everybody and welcome to another video. This is something I touch upon here and there from time to time, my dear friends. I venture into the topic of the American comic book industry. I don't venture there much because first, well, I'm not from America, so I couldn't really care less about what's happening in the United States of America. And also, I just read what I love and what I want to read, so it's not much of a problem, much of an issue for me what sells in the US of A or not. Nevertheless, it is interesting to see that, um, well, people are in certain ways all the same all around the world, and uh, in, in that what they want is, well, good entertainment in literature, in films and TV shows and music and video games, so on and so forth. And it is a fact that uh, the production of uh, the graphic novel medium or the comic book medium in the United States of America has been awful, has been very, very bad lately. And out of a hundred titles, you can maybe find one that is worth it. And that is precisely what I'm talking about here. Uh, please do look at the screen. Now, I have uh, thought of looking at this uh, IC. CV2 chart after observing uh, a couple of instances of insanity on the internet connected with the American comic book medium. Firstly, when uh, I don't remember the name, I'm sorry, there was a guy, a writer over at DC Comics who is writing a, another reboot of the original Green Lantern uh, superhero, not like the Green Lantern core Hal Jordan, but the Alan Scott Green Lantern, the, the original original golden age Green Lantern, the Green Lantern whose uh, ring does not work based on uh, this um, scientific uh, power battery, but rather something akin to magic, and he, his, his weakness is wood and not the color yellow. You know, you know, that Green Lantern, Alan Scott. So firstly, they made him into a homosexual a few, few years back. Uh, ago, but that's something that is just done today in the in the USA comic book industry. Everybody is gay, which is I I think you know practically the norm <laughs> in the US comics. But what is more interesting is that this particular writer made uh, a couple of videos uh, and posts on Twitter and social media saying. Uh, we need to own the comics gate people and haters, so buy my book. This is literally the worst way of selling a book. Like, it, it doesn't matter if you come from the mainstream or the independent scene. If you want to sell your book just to own some sort of enemies you think you have... Mm, no, not really a good business strategy. You should try to sell your book by saying, it's a great book, buy it, you'll enjoy it. Full stop. That should be enough. So make quality product, people will buy it. Uh, it is, it's just, you know, no, no brainer right there. And of course, this man and this comic book will get a lot of attention, will get a lot of clicks and likes and retweets, and that's it. The, the sales will not go up. All that he will get are those clicks and likes and retweets, and that means nothing. You can show it up your ass, your likes and retweets. If you are a creator who wants to sell product, you need revenue. You need to sell the product. Clicks and likes mean nothing to you. And that's exactly what it's going to get. So after this and after a couple of other instances, I went, all right, so let's, let's see what really sells over there, over the pond. And I wasn't surprised. I absolutely wasn't surprised because what sells... And I wasn't focusing on the single comic book issues because I know that people don't just don't buy those. People don't buy the monthly periodicals anymore. They they they, they don't buy Batman issue fifty eight series twenty five. No, no. People prefer if they read. People prefer not all of them. I am generalizing, of course. They read the collected editions. Even I do that. I mean, I just wait for the collected edition. But I'm from Europe, and our 
our model is a little bit different here. We do mostly publish thicker volumes of you know the graphic novel bande dessinée format format we're not really into those uh, 24 pages periodicals as they are in the United, in the United States of America so i'm used to that more and also if i wanted to order uh single issues from the United States of America i would have to pay through the nose because the shipping is abhorrent the the taxes the you know the the the, the vat when it comes over the border, it's, it, it, I mean, it's more expensive than the comic book itself. So no, I just wait for the, for the collected edition. So if you look at the screen, you will see that uh, in September 2023, as far as graphic novels, adult graphic novels, what people bought <laughs> in the USA was... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin, which came out like a year ago. And it's awesome. I've read it. I've got a review on my channel. I'll post a link in the description down below. 100% recommend. And then Oddballs, which is like a, an adaptation of a cartoon on Netflix. And manga. All manga. Now, I am not a huge manga reader. I Because I'm not just focused on one medium or one type of a graphic novel or a comic book. I love European comics. I love American comics. I love manga that appeals to me. I am not, you know, I don't single out one country of origin. I just need to be uh, <laughs> mesmerized. I need to be fascinated by the story and by the art. So, for example... Out of these titles on the screen that you can see right there, I uh, am acquainted with Berserk. I've read a couple of those. It's number 14 there, by the way. I've read a couple of these deluxe editions, which collect like three smaller, uh, do they call them Tanko Ban volumes? Like basically three about 200 pages uh, books are collected into one, so I've read about four or five of them. So, I, and it's it's not really what uh, an an unlearned person would consider to be typical manga. It's a dark, grim, and gritty, depressing fantasy. Fantastic original, grasping story, tragic main hero, beautiful art. Something I will recommend. 100%, even to people who don't read manga. And I don't read manga that often. I only really read a very little of it. And I was absolutely fascinated by Berserk. And I've also read uh, the original uh, Dragon Ball. I haven't read the Dragon Ball Super, which is, I suppose, a continuation. I read the original one. The by Akira Toriyama when Goku is still a, a kid. So I read that one, and th that's it. And and of course I read the TMNT Last Ronin by Kevin Eastman and uh, the other guys uh, from IDW. So, but I can't really blame them. This is something I am not surprised by, because uh, what the you know the main difference between the manga and the Ameri the modern american comics books is that um there is something for everybody in manga so there is diversity of content so you can find fantasy science fiction or s slice of life wholesome stories for boys and girls and for old people and young people and uh, manga about sports and about all different kinds of things and also the way the Japanese people are publishing those things is they are publishing it in, in uh, publishing them in magazines, and then people, actual readers, vote by letters. I think what manga will get the continuation, what manga will be published in those uh, collected editions. So only the best ones, only the most popular ones, only the ones that that the readers actually like come out and and continue. The other ones who are not voted by the readers, they just get cancelled. They don't continue. So this is really, uh, you know, a, a publishing based on merit. This is something that is the only way 
if you want to continue publishing good stories. And also, what I do appreciate about uh, the um, you know the manga uh, uh, as opposed to the American comics, that is this continuity. That is this uh, consistency, which means that they start with a volume one, and they continue until the story is finished. Whether the final volume is two, three, four, or one hundred and fifty-five. Whereas in the modern American comic books, you have constant reboots and rehashes and changes and events, and you and people who are not really versed. In the comic book medium, they don't know how, where to start. They don't know where to continue. They don't know where to finish. And most of it's shite anyway. So people mostly end up with reading uh, old standalone stories. Like, for example, if we take Batman as an example. Th- Batman The Long Halloween. Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Batman The Killing Joke. Batman Year One. And so on and so forth. Batman um, uh, The... Uh, one of my favorites by Matt, Matt Wagner and there are multiple stories by Matt Wagner but what they do often at over at Marvel and DC is that they for example publish like a com- complete collection of a title or a hero a character written or written and drawn by one person so people mostly end up doing this so what I wanted to say the point of this video is you want to sell stuff? Make that stuff good and it will sell. All right then. Let me know in the comments down below what you think and they'll be all. Thank you very much for watching and I'm out of here.